Thank you. All right, so welcome everybody. Um, thank you for joining me here during the Germany game. I, today I will tell you about animations and transitions, what they actually are, why you should use them, um, how they can help you in your app, and you know how you can actually use them and implement them. And finally, also, I will briefly touch motion layout, which just came out today, so that's very new. Um, my name is Josie Wolf. I'm not a high school student anymore, which is really nice. Uh, I just graduated a few days ago, and I'm a... <laughs> thank you. So yeah, I'm finally free until October when I will start uni. Um, and I'm a freelance Android developer from Hamburg, Germany, and by now I also do some organization with the GDG Android Hamburg, so if you ever want to speak in Hamburg, just ping me. Um, all the slides will be available later, like in a few hours, on speakerdeck.com slash Wolf. I'll put up the link later, too. First of all, a bit of, you know, pre-context. Um, this talk is API 21 plus. I'm so sorry for everybody who has to support lower, but um, it's really just way easier AP121+, and you know, this Twitter account said it's the MinSDK is 21, so I guess that's fine. Also, you know, it's the Germany game, so, uh, well, the video doesn't play, but you know, I will get really, really sad if I don't know when a goal is happening, so maybe if you, like, are watching a live ticker, I just ask you to either be really, really quiet and don't tell anybody about it, or scream real loud so I, I know and I can celebrate. Um, but with that, let's like, let's actually get started. Oh, there's the GIF. So yeah, I will get really sad. Um, I searched for a sad Angela Merkel GIF, but there wasn't any. So let's start with, you know, the actual content. We all know material design and not by now material theming, and we know all the cool stuff and how nice it looks, and um, we know the pains of actually implementing it in our apps. So this is a video I took from the material uh, documentation, and it's about material motion. And there are several things about material motion which we'll learn today. So a while back I was working on a side project of mine for a service that our school used, and it had a website which wasn't really responsive, there was no app whatsoever either, so you couldn't really use it on mobile, which, to be fair, just sucked. And so I went out and tried, at least I tried to create an Android app. And at one point, I thought, all right, now I, c I show the data and it looks fairly nice. Now I want to, I don't know, I want to make it more smooth. I want to add some animations and transitions. And I want to do this awesome stuff that the material design documentation shows. And just, I don't know how, but I stumbled upon this animation or transition on the Google Play Store, which to be fair, looks really, really sweet. And I tried to implement it, and I tried it over a course of two weeks, and I failed. It was so fucking hard. I mean, come on, you all know the pains of you know, animating things and transitioning things. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, I guess. But I just couldn't find any resource to do it. So after three additional extra weeks, I finally managed at 4 a.m. in the night to be able to let a scream of just joy let loose. And my mom came into my room and she was like, what are you doing? Look, I just made this transition. I just made this animation. She was like. <laughs> she actually had the same reaction as my now manager, or project manager, when I told him that we should actually add animations and transitions to our app. He was like, what? I mean, you know, it costs time. It costs money. Time is money, you know it. Right, so, no, we won't edit. We have to add core features. He was like, what if I told you it is a core feature? He was like, what? Animations and transitions are actually important. I'm not a UX designer. 
and there are good reasons for that, but I can tell you as far as animations and transitions help to provide context for the users. So just, you know, looking back at our transition from before, we, we immediately know what will happen um, when we click on an element. We know, all right, this is Game of Thrones, this is Walking Dead. And um, it just helps us understand the app more easily. Of course, you could do it without the animation and transition. But first of all, it wouldn't look as nice. And second of all, it would just be way harder to understand. And then, you know, I told you about the story and about the problem, but yeah, how do I actually do it? There are two parts to that. And first of all, I'm gonna look into how you can like mentally approach this problem. First of all is to break it down into small pieces. I mean, maybe you would have hoped for some kind of magic thing, but I can tell you there isn't. Um, but breaking it down into small pieces can actually help you and feel like small magic. Um, so let's do that. Let's look at the animation transition. We see there's some stuff going on, and you know, the easiest thing is like to just slow it down. So what we can see is there's a circular unreveal, which we'll wait for. Um, and then this element moves, and then there's a circular reveal starting from it. All right, so let's write it down real quick so we keep it in mind. Uh, we'll look at what that actually means on Android later. And of course, when we hit the back button, we want such a nice animation and transition too. So looking at that, looks really nice. Um, props to the Google Play team, by the way. And um, we also will slow that down. So we'll see, well, it's not slowed down, but we see that there's like a circular unreveal and then the element moves back to the first screen and then there's a circular reveal. So actually it's just like before, just the other way around. To, you know, do something, you gotta know how to do it. And the first step to know to do that is, I believe someone populist once said that, but I don't know who, so you gotta know your tools to create things. And let's look at our tools for animating things. So first of all, I think most of you know animated vector drawables. Um, so when you have vector drawables, for example, in your music player app, you maybe wanna animate the play and pause button or we have shared element transitions, which we just saw, which can be hard to work with, let's put it that way. Um, and we have physics-based animations, which were added with the upcoming of material design, which we'll look at later. Um, we have newly constraint set, when you use constraint layout, and we have view property animations, which with we can animate properties of the view, surprisingly. So you could, for example, animate the height or the width or the color, the background color, or whatever you wanted, actually, of a view. And then, marked in red, there's motion layout. So at Google I.O., how many of you have heard of motion layout yet? Well, that's a good percentage. So motion layout is basically a version of constraint layout or a sub version of constraint layout that helps you add animations and transitions more easily and Google announced it at Google I.O. And actually just this morning they posted the first alpha version of this layout online. So we will briefly touch that later. Um, but basically motion layout helps you to create animations and transitions in such a new way which has not been there yet and is really, really awesome. And it's backward compatible, compatible to API 18. So that's good, good for the poor souls of you who are not API 21 yet. So let's actually, you know, get to the coding part because I could talk about UX and UI, but first of all, we start out with like a simple recycler view. Um, this, by the way, is why I'm not a UI designer. Um, so we just have like items and just like in Google Play, we have this circular reveal or we have this circle view. And we wanted to transition to our not so fancy detail page. 
And it should look like this once it's transitioned. So let's start, let's actually start out with our detail page because you know we can all create a recycle view. We have a collapsing toolbar layout um, in that we'll add a constraint layout. And in that we'll add an image view and a rounded color view. So you may ask, well, rounded color view and why do we actually need that stuff? But we actually do need it. Um, we want to create like a custom title and custom background for our collapsing toolbar layout. Turns out collapsing toolbar layout isn't too well customizable at all. So um, this is what we just got to do. This image view serves as our background, which will be revealed. And the rounded color view is the shared element, which we'll look at in a second, uh, from which this circular reveal will start. And of course, you know, we gotta have a toolbar. Um, and now in our UI, UI layout editor, looks like this. So, fairly weird. And we'll see why it's cool in a second. So, starting from our, you know, recycler view and our items, we can just simply, uh, you know, start certain intent um, and We'll make it to the second activity, you know, plain old stuff. And then what we will do to create a shared element transition is to create those transition activity options. Um, we'll tell it to make a scene transition animation, all right, from this context um, on this view, which is in this case this rounded color view we just saw. And um, we'll give it the transition name of this um, view. This transition name, if, you've, if you haven't worked with shared element transitions before, is for the Android framework to know, all right, this view is this view in the other screen. Um, last but not least, we'll of course just yeah, start the activity just as usual um, and we'll pass the transition, acti transition activity options. So now when we Click on an item. Looks like this. Yeah, that's, it. I mean, it's all right. It's the first part. So now we want the circular reveal, right? I mean, that's the cool thing about it. So luckily, the Android framework provides several methods for animating things and also a circular reveal method. So it takes some parameters. The view, the center, the start radius, and end radius, of course, and returns an animator, so we could even customize it if, you, if we wanted to. Most times, we don't really need to customize it. Um, so, important thing to know about like start radius and end radius is if you want to um, reveal something, you start with a radius of zero and uh, end with a bigger radius, and if you want to unreveal something, it's just the other way around. So, now we only need to like yeah, call this method from there. So let's do that. We keep in mind that we have like a hidden image view there, which is our background to be revealed. So first of all, of course, we want to like set the background color um, to the color of this circle view we just had. So this one. And um, next up, we're going to get the center of this rounded image view. And we are going to create this animator instance. So create circular reveal. Our collapsing toolbar background, this image view which is hidden, um, is to be revealed and we just take the center we just got and we start with a radius of zero and we want to end with radius of the width of this collapsing toolbar background. So actually really easy and after that we'll just say all right, duration is 400. Now we only got to, you know, make this hidden view visible, of course, and start the animation. And that's actually it, almost, because, you know, it's a shared element transition. We could say, all right, we know, or we could like take stopwatch and um, measure the time it takes for this shared element transition to complete. But you shouldn't do that. Um, I saw some examples of that, but in the real world I found that your animation may work fine in the newest pixel, but if you've got like a Moto G6 like I do, animations can take, say, longer. Um, 
and then you're off by 50 milliseconds, which makes the animation just look weird and jarring. So you want to set a listener for the shared element enter transition and um, just when the transition has actually ended, then call the reveal function. And you know, that's it. Now we have our really, really nice, almost really nice circular reveal. All right, so that works. But you know, what about like the material part? Because we want our animation to not be like, we want it to be like, shoo. That's what it's there for, material, to be awesome. Making the transition material. So material design does say several things about um, animating things and material motion. And one of the things is called easing. So this is the difference from the material design guidelines between easing and no easing. And what you can see is that just this blue element which has easing is a lot smoother, moves a lot smoother, and just is a lot more natural. And that's because in the real world you never will see like linear motion. A bus doesn't like go from here to here with a constant speed, but it starts slowly and then it has some speed and it loses that again. And um, there are different types of easing actually implemented already for us on Android, which we can use. So there are lots of types. I will just show you some. Standard easing, which is like, you know, it starts rather slow, then gets a constant speed and then slows down. There is decelerate easing, so it will maybe work. Um, it will start faster and then actually decelerate and slow down. Or the opposite, which is accelerate easing. So the element um, moves faster towards the end of the animation. Those easing um, difference, differences of easing can be used uh, as much as you want. And mostly I do recommend standard easing because you rarely use accelerate or decelerate easing. So the other thing the material design documentation says about uh, material motion is real world forces like gravity inspire an element's movement along an arc rather than in a straight line. And maybe you've like seen that in this Google Play animation transition we just had. The element goes around like this and not like this. Um, and that's actually important because it's the same thing of nothing in the real world being proper linear and it just gives the user something that is known to him and um, makes him f feel more welcome. So it's actually pretty, pretty important to actually add that to your animation because otherwise it's not worth as much as with material motion. So let's do that in code or XML. We can tr define a transition set, which is basically just, you know, a collection of transition. Uh, transitions. We can tell um, the Android framework to have a transition ordering, so either together um, or we can execute uh, those in non-parallel after each other. Um, and in our case, we only have like this one transition, which is change bounds. So when the bounds of view are changed, we tell it to use an arc motion. And that's just really simple. So our element moves along an arc. We define this maximum angle, or actually the angle of 90 degrees to achieve a natural feeling. You wouldn't want to have more than 90 degrees in the most cases, so stick with that. Um, and then we can, just like with layered inflator, there's a transition inflator, and we can just like create an empty transition set inflate this transition, and um, then we can add it to our transition set. So this is the Kotlin way for those of you who haven't done much Kotlin yet. And um, after that, we'll set the duration. Again, this is something you may want to play around with with the duration. 
Maybe you want to lower this to 350 milliseconds. Maybe you want to up this to 500 milliseconds. Although something more than 500 milliseconds most likely feels way too slow. Um, but definitely I can do recommend to do some testing on your users. Maybe do some A-B testing with those values because I had some people tell me, all right, yeah, this animation looks nice. And other ones were confused because it was too fast for them. Other ones just found it way too slow. So that's up to you. But something between 350 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds mostly works best. And last but not least, looking at the easing, we want to add an interpolator. So as I said before, we have different kind of easings and different kinds of interpolators. So we want to add a accelerate, decelerate interpolator. And now our animation transition actually looks like this. So, you know, it's in PowerPoint, so. But it looks really, really much better than before without any material motion and much more natural. It helps the user understand, all right, there's something happening and there's another stream coming up and this is its meaning. So I briefly mentioned motion layout before and I want to touch it very quickly. So I gave this talk last week already and when I mentioned motion layout, I was like, yeah, we know that it will come sometime in the future. And then this morning I woke up to this tweet and I was like, well, all right. Looks like I'm going to have to mention it. So motion layout, as I mentioned before, is a small um, subset of constraint layout. It also works with constraints, but provides even more possibilities. So while you could animate with constraint sets before, there were some limitations. And um, motion layout basically works with many different things, but it has a motion scene. And um, in that there are different sets, constraint sets, state sets, um, and the actual transition. As you can see, there are many new things like on click and on swipe, which are things for the user to um, manipulate the action. While with constraint layout, you couldn't like just stop or pause the animation. This is what you can do with motion layout. And with that, you can also modify the um, animation or transition by the user's input. So the user could maybe drag something or swipe some something and you can interpolate your values based on that. There's also new stuff like keyframe set, key position, key attributes, custom attribute, and those all hint at what will come next into Android Studio, which is the keyframe editor. So you'll be basically able to make animations and transitions through a UI editor. And this other thing, we won't touch it yet. It will be covered more thoroughly later. So let's actually look at like this use case for motion layout. This is a simple constraint layout and we have this view which is on the left side and the constraints are there holding it in place and this is our start view. And we want our element to end up on the right side so the constraints are set accordingly. And then we can just use a motion scene. We do simple stuff actually. We also add a transition that we knew before and we'll tell it with the motion namespace that we have this start constraint set so our view where um, so our layout where the view is on the left side and then we have this end constraint set where the view is on the right side and of course we can also set the duration we could do that programmatically whatever you want and what we see here is on swipe which is um, basically a use, user modification from um, swiping a button. So that's what you can do. It's really cool and just play around with it. Um, and to you know make it material, we can do that here too because right now it would be just like linear and that's not too nice. We can also add an interpolator. There are many interpolators. So I would recommend the accelerate decelerate interpolator, but 
just so you know like how many there are, a lot. Um, those are all in the Android documentation um, and I can definitely recommend you to like check it out and um, try it. Next, um, keyframes. For the UI editor, which is not available in Android Studio yet, but obviously will be in the coming weeks, we can define actually like a keyframe set. So we have a transition and we tell the Android framework that at frame, posi frame position 50 on a scale from 0 to 100, um, so actually at the half of the animation or transition, um, we want the Y percentage to be raised by 25%. And the target is our button and we don't care about the type for now. And then it actually looks like this. And that's how easy keyframes work and um, how you can use them. So as a conclusion, implementing animations and transitions can be tricky, especially if you've got your manager, project manager, breathing down your neck and telling you, complete that feature today. And you're like, ah. And you should definitely pay some attention to it because even if your PM tells you that animations and transitions are not worth it, ask your UX designer. They definitely are. They help your users understand your app much better. They're not a must-have feature, but they can definitely improve your app in so many ways. So it's really worth it. And motion layout makes things a lot easier. This is just alpha one of motion layout, which was released today. Um, it will come with constraint layout 2.0, which will be hopefully available as soon as possible. Um, but I can only recommend you to play around with motion layout and constraint layout 2.0. Um, and go create some awesome animations and transitions. Reading on, I've still got like four links. Um, the, obviously, the Android documentation or training about animations is comprehensive. You need some time to read through it, but there are, if you have absolutely no idea where you should start with animations and transitions, you should definitely take a look at that. It provides some techniques and uh, overview of the APIs. Then, of course, the material design documentation on motion. There is even more on not only motion of elements, but also on motion in navigation, how the elements behave, uh, how the screens behave, and recommended transitions. And with motion layout and constraint layout, because you can really create awesome stuff with it, um, there is, as of like nine hours ago, the constraint layout examples, which also feature motion layout and the new speeder. And there is this medium post which gives an introduction to motion layout. You can find me on medium.com slash wolf where there's also a uh, written version of, making, of the making of, of this animation we just created. Um, and you can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, and you can find the slides for this and for other talks on speakerdeck.com. Also, tweet a link later, and it will be up with DroidCon as soon as the recording is up. Thank you for listening. <laughs>